All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Net Gains Podcast, episode 15. Uh, today we're talking about burnout, so we have a few strategies we want to pass along. Roger and I might debate on if I'm currently burned out, so stay tuned for that. I'm sure he's going to say I am because You're always I, I, don't, I don't even know if burnout exists in Roger's mind. So oh, uh, gosh. stay tuned for all that. It's coming up next. Hello and welcome back to the Net Games Podcast, episode 15. I am your host, Frank Field, joined as always by my co-host, Roger Parent. Hey, <laughs> how are we doing, Frank? Long time no see. Long time no see. It's been a whole 60 seconds since episode 14 <laughs> for us. Uh, Roger, a little look behind the curtain. Roger has 23 minutes now before our meeting starts. So we're going to jam this out. I don't think we're going to do a riff. Let's just talk about burnout. So really quick, I, I don't know if you think burnout even exists. I feel like you think that it's all mental and that you should never get tired. <laughs> so I'm going to defer to you to start this off and just talk to us about what burnout is. I do think burnout exists. Oh, <laughs> okay. But I think that it is incredibly overused before people are truly burned out. And, you know, people have like a bad week and they're like, oh, I'm so burnt out. It's like what I think it's just like sort of like imposter syndrome. It's like people just like slather the word out there without really understanding what burnout can be. And to me, burnout is when you've had a consistent, excessive amount of stress on a singular sort of thing or a group of things that is leading you to change your relationship with said thing over time. And a good example is like, I was a CEO for nine and a half years and I grinded for many years and I had ups and downs. I had horrible weeks and great weeks. It wasn't until year eight that I really started to feel burnout where it was just like, I could feel the end of like, I don't think I want to be in this position anymore, you know, but just because I had bad weeks or even bad months, didn't necessarily mean I was overall burnt out of the role. It was just tough. Those were tough periods. But my relationship with being the CEO and even just like my view of managing employees and all that came with every all of it, I think like started to take a turn for the worse, which signaled to me that I was near my end of the journey and I needed to take a step back. I, I wonder if you're mischaracterizing what burnout is um, because it, it sounds like what you're describing is a lot of burnout within a larger burnout, right? So I don't know if you, like when you have burnout, what you should typically do is deload. So like if you're under stress and burned out, you should de-stress, deload your body to recover, right? So I don't know if you were in these, when you were in these bad weeks or bad months, if you would deload afterwards or just push through anyway, and then you found yeah, this larger I, I call them burnout. Maybe it's just like a technicality. Like I would just call them periods of high stress followed by periods of offsetting that best I could with lower stress. Mm -hmm. um, burnout to me signals like you're at the end of, or like you are completely burnt out. Like you are just, I don't, I don't know the way, the way I, maybe it's just the, the definition of it. The way I think of burnout is this overarching longer term thing that has caused me to be like revisiting whether or not I even want to be the CEO anymore. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a different thing. Um, let, let's think about it in terms Maybe. of like a car analogy. You do a burnout with tires. You The tires are, are toast, right? But you can replace the tires and the car still works. So, you know, if you're like mentally burnt out from being a CEO, you maybe just need to, I don't know, whatever the analogy for that would be, just replace your synapses with, with some like leisure time and then you're still good to go. Like the body still works, the car still works, the engine still runs, but you just needed a refresh. Yeah, fair. I guess, I guess um, let's, let me try to throw out another analogy example out there and let's talk about it, cool. which is lifting. When I lift too hard or I'm going too hard, I get really sore. 
but I wouldn't feel that like my muscles are burnt out. I would feel like my muscles are sore, mm -hmm. but over a period of six months, if I'm lifting and lifting and lifting and lifting, and I'm just feeling like, man, like overall my joints feel like they're taken where, um, like this shoulder press just doesn't feel good or like I'm, I'm hitting a plateau and I'm just not like my relationship with the gym is changing. I would feel like that to me would be burnout, not like the weekly, like, wow, I feel really sore this week because I went too hard. I'm mm -hmm. not burnt out. Right. That's but you're not how, thinking about thinking. quitting, working out forever at that point. You just like, oh, Correct. I need a little bit of a break. Yeah. I need to deload. I need to take a rest day. Like I, 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 my body at this point just sort of tells me and I know when I need to take a rest day. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm burnt out going into the rest day. It just means like I probably overworked myself a little bit and I need to back up and relax but burnout to me is but again i could be wrong i could be completely wrong here but is like that overall feeling of like man i just i don't even want to be in the gym anymore right now like i just want to change something big and like it's like all right i want to quit this job or i'm overall just burnt out with this lifestyle mm -hmm. yeah that, that's a different thing so I, I i'm glad you you touched on the workout thing because that's what i wanted to segue to next which is this is the kind mm -hmm. of the stage that i'm in right now and some of the symptoms and signs that I'm feeling are like injuries are starting to pick up or like I got knee tendonitis going on now. And then my elbow started acting up after a tournament. Um, I, my, my legs aren't recovering the way they were, you know, like three, four weeks ago. They feel heavy. And even I've taken two days off and they still feel heavy. So like all of these are signs that, that you're starting to see where it's like, shoot, I might actually be burned out. I need to, to deload. So that's that's like a huge sign for me is when these little nagging injuries are starting to come up it probably means you've overstressed your body and then your your you know, whatever like joints are failing and, and parts pieces of the the body are failing yeah i think if you're in a perpetual cycle of injuries you're clearly doing something wrong mm -hmm. that you need to address um because on, on like a micro level when i'm working out sometimes i just feel I'm like, oh man, I feel really mentally tired today. And it's like, I can typically mentally convince myself that I'm just being soft and I need to like mm -hmm. yeah. turn this around. And then like all of a sudden I'm working out and I don't feel tired at all. And it's like, wow, five minutes ago, I felt like, oh, I'm so tired. I convinced myself that I'm just so tired. And then five minutes later, I'm like full of energy and adrenaline and I feel great. And I end up crushing that workout. And I'm like, you know, even like tiredness, I'm not convinced isn't just like a mental decision sometimes. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes on the court, I'm playing pickleball and I feel like lethargic and I, and I'm ta talking to myself that I'm feeling slow and everything. And then like, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to like fix my stance. I'm really going to work on bending my knees and I'm going to bring some energy of like loud communication between points or whatever, or during the point to my partner, like my ball, your ball, whatever. And then like three minutes later, I'm like, just not lethargic anymore. Mm -hmm. It's I was able to just choose not to be lethargic. It wasn't like something that was like magically happening to me. I just chose it. You know, yeah, it's, it's so funny. It's like that, that internal question of, are you just being soft or are you burnt out? And I, yeah. I think we did hit on it, right? Like if, if it's just one, a one off day where you're tired, you're probably just tired. Right. But now if we're mm -hmm. seeing multiple days and a pattern of like, shoot, I'm tired every practice and like, man, now my, my, my knee is hurting and now my shoulder is hurting. At that point, once you're seeing these rolling symptoms coming together, that's a sign, like a clear sign of burnout. Yeah. Yeah, totally true. I mean, there's also like, to me, I always want to drill down and like, what, what is like this cascading series of events happening? Like for you, I would say, like when I started to feeling the injuries sort of like piling up, I was saying not even that I was generally overtraining, but I think I was training the wrong way. So for example, um, when I was doing a lot of time in the gym and training, and I am actually doing fairly high volume now. Like I have an hour, hour and a half of pickleball straight into an hour of lifting, like two and a half hours straight, five days a week. Plus I play another two times. Like because my volume's so high, I shouldn't really be doing high rep sets. So like when I'm in the gym, I'm, st I'm actually doing heavier weight, but like lower reps, like it's still taxing, but like, I'm not like building up so much lactic acid and feeling super sore on top of all the extra training. I was finding like, for me, back squatting a three by three heavier, 
I'm not nearly as sore as back squatting a lighter three by 10. Or then like the next day I'm like, Oof, like just like getting all those reps is tough. And so it's just like, there's a lot of like tweaks and changes you can make within there. Even just like elbow tendonitis, like, okay, are you, are you like working your forearms, your tricep, rolling out your tricep, like all the different things to take care of that. Or are you just like training and just feeling burnt out or are you just mistraining? Are you asking me? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, do you feel, you feel like, well, so yeah. You so feel like burnt out. The, the rolling thing that happened was the leg started to feel heavy and lethargic. That's been going on for like a week and a half. And then from that point, the leg started feeling heavy and then the knee tendonitis came on. And now the most recent thing is the elbow. So like, you know, there's rehab stuff that we can do for the knee, which I'm doing like some knees over toes stuff. Uh, like you said, the forearm work for the elbow, I'm doing that now too. But it's mm -hmm. it, like, it's an overall sign of like A is leading to B, which is leading to C. And at that point we kind of have to reevaluate like, all right, maybe it's time to deload. Yeah, you, you should definitely deload, but is burnout more of like the mental, I see burnout as more of like the mental, like, I just don't even want to get in the gym right now because everything's failing. Like, do you feel like you're still as motivated to compete in volleyball? Yeah. Oh, or yeah. do you, that's, that's what I feel like. So I don't feel like you're burnt out more than just like your body's breaking down a little bit and we got to tweak the fitness routine. Mm -hmm. But I think and that's, it's like physical versus competing mental. competing at a lighter weight. But I, I do want to circle back on the mental well, yeah, nice. I, I heard that one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I do want to circle back on the mental because the physical is pretty easy. Like you can tell when your body's breaking down, you know when you have to make a change. But the mental piece of burnout is so much harder to quantify because you're right. Like how much of it is just I need to tell myself to stop being soft and just push through here and like focus for a good two hours at work or focus for a good two hours on my side hustle, you know? What are, what are the signs that you see in terms of the mental mental burnout that is like a like a you know a cascading effect well it's like right now you still have this great relationship with volleyball and you still like motivated and you want to compete and part of the reason why you're you're feeling the need to deload is because you feel like maybe your body's going through some adversity or breaking down so maybe you're overtraining a little bit and maybe that's true but i don't know if you're actually like burnt out on training more than you're just um you need to tweak your training routine, especially because you're heading into the beginning stages of your season. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be breaking down like this in April for a season that basically runs from March to October or, you know, it's a summer sport. So I think that it, there's probably more of just like a training change that needs to happen there. At least I would think now, look, I, I remember it from volleyball by September, I'm like, I've, I've been traveling. I've been playing all summer long. Everyone in April and May all wants to play pickup, right? You can find crews of like 10, 15 people. Then by the end of September, October, everyone's burnt out on volleyball. And it's hard to find a crew of four. <laughs> it's like, and to me, that's like the burnout cycle that happens when you go through a tough, long grinding season. So you don't think burnout is physical at all? You think it's only a mental thing? I think that, I mean, you could probably describe it as the body is feeling burnt out from overtraining. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that you are burnt out from volleyball. Yeah, I'm so asking in the, in the we weird sense. Uh, if, if we're talking about me, then I, I definitely don't feel burnt. I'm actually bummed that I have to train less right now because I'm still chomping at the bit and I know what I have to work on. I'm like, shoot, like, I got to take like a week off to heal the body, but I'm, I'm still ready to go. So it, it's definitely not a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think by September, October, if you're feeling like, woof, I'm like, I'm looking forward to the off season. It's not like you're all of a sudden just like burnout comes on typically over a long earned period of time. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the season, if you're like, man, I'm just really looking forward to the off season, taking some time away and whatever, that's like your relationship with the sport is changing a little bit in that period of time where you're like, yeah, I've been doing this for seven months straight yeah. and grinding and grinding and grinding. And I'm like, Oof, I just can't wait for the holidays to just chill out, relax. Like Thanksgiving, baby. That's the good one. Strong again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, and again, this is just the way I'm thinking about it. Maybe our, our viewers, uh, and you think differently, but that's like how I've seen it. 
Um, all right, so slight change here. I, I sourced some questions from Answer the Public. Shout out Neil Patel. Which, by the way, side note, I didn't know that Neil Patel did Answer the Public. That guy, I see his face everywhere. So shout out to that guy. He's just staring at everyone, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's, like, yeah. <laughs> He's got a glare about him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to throw some random questions at you. We'll rapid fire this for 10 minutes, and we'll see what happens, all right? Okay. What do you think of burnout versus depression? Do you see them as the same thing? How can you tell when you're in burnout versus just straight up depressed? Uh, having seen like various people close to me go through like legit depression um, and even like there's things like postpartum depression and things like that. Like I firmly believe that there is a I don't know the way to say this, but like, I feel like a chemical imbalance or something that's just like very different than burnout when it comes to depression. Like there are some stages of people's lives or things that they go through that where depression is, it's not necessarily earned. It just like chemically can happen and alter the way the brain is wired <laughs> such that it's actually out of their control. And it's very difficult to work through um, because depression inherently actually can breed more depression. Like depression causes you to do things that put you further into depression. And that's why it's so hard to get out. When you're depressed, you don't wanna work, you don't want your morning routine, you don't want your, and like it just causes you to go further and further down. Whereas burnout, it's like sometimes you get so burnt out on something that what you need is what your body's telling you, which is I need to take a break. I need to pivot here. Right. And, and that could actually be good for you versus like when you're in like a pure depression, a lot of times what you're thinking because the state of mind is altered is actually leads to a perpetual cycle of even more depression. But that's super interesting. Yeah. yeah it's almost like when you're burned out, you need to do less. And when you're depressed, you need to do more. Yeah, and it's so tough to... That's oversimplifying, of course. Last, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely oversimplification. But, like, you know, the last thing you want to do when you're feeling depressed is, like, get up and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know, versus when you're burned out, like, probably what you need is to chill out. Yeah. And what you want to do is to chill out. So it's kind of, like, natural. Um, so, yeah, I see them as very different. And I feel like burnout is sort of earned through a cycle of... Now you can get burned out. Some people are in like, I want to like at least acknowledge the fact that like we have some incredible privileges of like, yes, you could take a week off of work if we needed to, if you, if you were feeling burnt out, some people just can't do that, right? Like they can't afford to miss a day of work mm -hmm. or for whatever reason. So sometimes burnout is like, because of their circumstances, they can't take that day off or chill out when they're going through that. So I just want to at least acknowledge that, that it's for those people, it's incredibly difficult to do maybe some of the things that we're recommending, which is like, yeah, maybe it's time to pivot. Maybe it's time to slow down your work hours. Well, it's easy for us to say when you have to pay your freaking mortgage, you know, yeah. like, um, so you have to make sure that you're getting your time off or relaxation in other ways. Mm -hmm. And I, that can also to tie back in, that can come from a morning, a morning routine, right? If you are, mm -hmm. you know, starting your day with things that are going to de-stress you, whether it's a morning walk, whether it's planning, whether it's journaling, meditation, um, making your bed, you know, do those things to kind of set yourself on the right course. Uh, yeah. All right. A couple more rapid fire. Maybe, maybe like one more rapid fire. Uh, mm. For you, what does burnout feel like? Actual signs and symptoms. Um, I feel like when I'm experiencing burnout, I don't feel the same energy to do the thing and my relationship with it changes where I start to become resentful of the very thing that I've been doing. So being a CEO is like the perfect example. I really enjoyed it. It's really stressful. I liked leading an organization, liked leading my people. Like I loved having a team culture. And when I got to the point where I was starting to resent the role, like, and resent even the team some of like, you know, it felt like people were like using me as a crutch when they didn't need to. And I felt they were more capable than maybe even they thought they were, or I was 
my relationship with the company wasn't like, I wasn't excited to wake up in the morning and go do that. Like the signs of burnout to me were, yeah, like I'm not, I'm just not enjoying it anymore. I'm not having fun. I'm not looking forward to it. You could tell when you have a task that you are looking forward to versus not. Yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, let's give some pro tips here to close out on how to recover from burnout. Yeah, I think it's participating in hobbies that uh, de-stress you, meditating, sleeping well, morning routine, good diet. Um, and I feel like tackling the problem head on to the best of your ability. Now, some people, like we, we talked about, can't just change their work situation, but they can go to work and say like, hey, I'd really like to pivot in this way, or I'd really like to, maybe they're doing some work that they don't enjoy, but there's a part of the business that they would love to learn about. Is there a way they could go to their work and say, hey, I'll, I continue to do the best job that I can for you every day. Would you be able to teach me this new thing that I'm like really interested in and maybe take 10 hours a week off my plate and shift it over to Sally so I can like learn a new skill that I think I could make really valuable for the company. Like, are there ways you can pivot or make changes and sort of try to communicate? Not necessarily that you're like, cause you don't want to get, there's some bad employers out there, but I always feel like direct communication is just typically leads to good things where you're able to not like emotional communication, but going to someone and being like, Hey, I'm really struggling in this area. What can we do? Like, I, I, I love, I, I want to continue to do great work for you, whatever. Um, yeah, and sometimes it's just some decompression time. Spending time with people that you have really good relationships with and being able to connect with people. I think the biggest thing that we've hit on in this whole podcast is the difference between burnout and just being overworked or overwhelmed. So in a, mm -hmm. in a different podcast we talked about you know how to have a stress relief formula so when you are overwhelmed like what can you do to de-stress yourself and then bring yourself out of overwhelm and then you know get right so things like that are going to be your morning routine it's going to be things that de-stress you uh whatever that is when you're in true burnout that's when you're thinking about as you said like quitting your job or like making a major change in life and when you're when you're at that point and you're thinking about you know quitting something that's when it you really need to reflect and like you said, talk with a manager, talk with your spouse, um, evaluate yourself and if you need to make a major change away from this thing, that's what true burnout is and that's the one you have to solve. And sometimes maybe you're right. Maybe you do need to quit that job. <laughs> maybe you do need to make that big change, right? It's like um, uh, I made a big change to go start a company and quit my em employer, right? I just felt the need to make that change. Sometimes that's natural, right? But when you're feeling that, identify it, put some real thought into it and talk to people that you respect and appreciate their opinion and, um, and make a, like a, try to make a logical, non-emotional decision there. And, and importantly, like try these stress relief formulas first. Because if you can just pull yourself out of overwhelm or recover your body, you might realize you're not actually burned out. You were just overworked a little bit. So, yep. um, you know, try that first before resorting to like a major move. But if you try these stress relief formulas and you still don't, you still feel burned out, that's a pretty good sign. It's time for a change. Yep. Love that. Beautiful. All right. You have one minute until your call. So why don't you give us a quote to close out on here, Roger? I don't have a quote. Off the top. Quote on burnout. I'll give, I can give a, one of my favorite quotes. Uh, okay, go ahead. Failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. Oh, that's so overused, though. Uh, when have you heard that? There's no way you've heard that before. I've heard that a million times. Oh, my God. That's, that's a crazy one. There's no way that's, okay. a, that's a mainstream quote. The number one cause of burnout is doing the same thing over and over again and not seeing results. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. But <laughs> All right. All right. Well, have good, good talk, day, my friend. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Hope you learned something. Catch us on the next episode, uh, and just keep on being a great human. Yo! Yo! Yo!